begin the dismantling operation, place the 150 LI in position on the bench or ramp. Remove side panels. To remove the right hand footboard, remove the two nuts fixing this to the frame. One of the screws fixing the connecting piece between leg shield and frame and the two screws fixing the footboard bracket. Remove the silencer by freeing the clamp holding the engine exhaust tube to the silencer body and removing the three nuts fixing body to crankcase. Remove oil drain plug, collecting the oil in a tray. Remove clutch cable from the clutch lever on the crankcase. The crankcase cover can now be removed by unscrewing the remaining 13 nuts. To remove the washers rapidly, we suggest the use of a magnet. Now you can see the inside of the crankcase. We have the chain sprocket with its torque limitator and the chain with its guides. The chain transmits the power to the outer clutch bell through a second torque limitator. To dismantle the clutch, the proper tool must be used. Compress the springs, remove the circlip, Slide out the clutch discs. The power is transmitted through the clutch discs to the inner clutch bell, which is splined directly to the gear primary shaft. To remove the inner clutch bell locking nut, the bell must be held by the appropriate tool. With the help of the extractor, remove the inner clutch bell, then the outer clutch bell. The needle bearing and the shims. The gearbox group is situated behind this flange. Remove chain guides by unscrewing the two fixing screws and then the chain. Having removed the six fixing screws, withdraw the gear group support flange by means of two six millimeter by one bolts screwed into the two threaded holes and inserting a screwdriver between the flange and the crankcase. The low speed gear has a series of dogs on its face to mesh with the kickstart shaft pivoted on the crankcase cover. As you can see, the cover can be replaced by another as there is no specified fitting relationship between this and the crankcase. Primary gears are always in constant mesh with the lay shaft gears which are moved to the required position on the lay shaft.
which acts also as a rear wheel stub axle by means of a cursor type sleeve controlled by this lever. Now the rear of the machine must be lifted onto a stand which can be of this type. To remove the rear hub, proceed first with the removal of the wheel rim. Then, after removing the hub locking nut, withdraw the hub by means of the extractor. Now, to remove the lay stub axle shaft, it is sufficient to tap it with a mallet on the wheel side. To remove the shock absorber, unscrew these two nuts. We now remove the engine rebound buffer from the crankcase and support the crankcase by means of a rod placed through the shock absorber attachment pins so that the cylinder head is in its lowest position. Remove the left hand footboard by unscrewing the five nuts and the screw fixing the connecting piece. Loosen the carburetor fixing screws choke cable adjuster and filter hose clip. Release throttle cable and remove carburetor with filter and hose. Having removed the spark plug and unscrewed the fixing screws, the cylinder cowl is removed. Having unscrewed the cylinder head nuts, remove head and gasket. Then the cylinder. To remove the piston, first take out the gudgeon pin circlip. If the engine is hot, the gudgeon pin can be extracted by means of a punch, pressing this by hand. If the engine is cold, then use the pin extractor. Remove the flywheel cowl by unscrewing the five screws. The fan cover is removed by unscrewing the two fixing screws or unclipping the circlip, whichever is fitted. Lock the flywheel with the appropriate tool. Unscrew the left-handed lock nut wheel by means of the extractor. timing is correct, it is advisable to mark the position of the stator plate in respect of the flange, so as to avoid re-timing on replacing. To remove the stator plate, release the wires on the flywheel low tension socket, then unscrew the three fixing screws. To remove the flywheel support flange, Unscrew the three nuts fixing it to the crankcase, then withdraw the flange by means of the extractor using two of the three screws just removed. Then block the crankshaft. 